is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, uh, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the run of edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 6648. Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning, I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. To recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms, I'm Paige Clark. Good morning. And it's a beautiful morning. It's 77 degrees in downtown St. Petersburg. Uh, kind of balmy out, uh, but I think at the end of the week, uh, the cold front is finally coming in. Bring it on. Yeah, we've been waiting, folks. We've been waiting. Please subscribe to our Health Signals newsletter. This is news you can use. It'll come in your inbox twice a month. That new one coming out the first of the month, folks. And also, please pick up our Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder, over 310 organic cell-ready liquid ingredients, so it's easy to take. And it's all powered by humic and fulvic acid that get good stuff in. And the bad stuff out. That's right. And we'll take your calls if you're watching us early, 877-927-6648. Everybody, bear with me. I have an equipment malfunction in my mouth. And my entire face is swollen and hurts all the way to my ears. Yeah, you're a real trooper for coming in today, I'll tell you. Well, it's because, unfortunately, my doctor's in Australia. In Australia. <laughs> so I've got to make it until next week, so I will miss next week's show. Yeah. Uh, however, I'm going to do my best and be a good listener today. Sounds good. So, but anyways. Just don't fall asleep. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I, and that's the me. subject today. Uh, yeah. A lot of it is about sleep and are we getting a good enough sleep. And I sure didn't get any sleep last night. Yeah. Because of this. Yeah. It's but, uh, you're um, swollen and you're still pretty, though. Oh, you're so sweet. I feel like a clown. Yeah. But, you know, this is interesting, Nico, because it really kind of comes back to what we've been saying. So many health conscious folks, you know, they all have a strong awareness and commitment to nutrition and exercise and eating the right foods. But in reality, uh, we're overlooking our sleep, and it really comes back to what, you know, I've learned so much from Jack Cruz, and, and we, we're very committed to, is it's really the circadian rhythm mm -hmm. and following nature, yeah, because nature's we, way. we used to follow the sun. We used to get up with the sun mm -hmm. and go to bed after the sun mm -hmm. went down. That's the normal thing. And when I watch podcasts of people that are out in the woods and actually uh, living out there mm -hmm. and uh, using uh, maybe transportation to get in the wild and spending a few nights or I follow a lot of people that have been doing it for years yeah and they get up with the sun and they go to bed with the sun it's just a natural progression they will at twilight uh, you know fix something to eat and then you know relax around for a little while but then nighttime is the time to sleep and, and so much of the whole reason we want to get up at those early morning hours and and right before the sun sets mm -hmm. is that it's the light that we need yeah. we're missing that infrared and red light yeah. and purple light like yeah. one of the articles. And that's because we're in buildings instead of outside. Exactly. And yeah. we're around all this blue light. Yeah. It, says carry on. it says sleep is connected to your mood, your hunger, your athletic performance, everything. So here are 11 sleep mistakes you're probably making, plus some tips on how to get a good night's sleep. So the first one is what we always stress, too much light. Too much artificial light. We were never meant to or evolved to be around this kind of light because it didn't exist. Yeah, even though that's an old-fashioned TV, we don't have any more, but uh, that's probably the main culprit for most people is Yeah, that. actually, if we had those TVs, it would be better for us. Yeah, they're a little warmer. <laughs> they, well, yeah, the they're a little warmer. Are, yeah, yeah. The LEDs are really more of a problem. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. And, and too much light, it seems outrageous. Your body prefers a dark environment to trigger the proper release of healing hormones like melatonin. Mm -hmm. See, melatonin is not just released when we sleep, it's released when we sleep in darkness. And uh, it's actually triggered in the morning to build up the reserve so you can have you it. manufacture yeah. it in early morning sunrise. Yeah, so, so that's why you want to get out in that sunshine in the morning, folks. Yeah, so subjects that slept with large amounts of light in the room, such as TV, have a 17% greater risk of gaining 11 pounds over the time of the study, which was conducted. Similar studies also link this poor lighting situation to obesity, diabetes, and certain types There's of cancer. There's no uh, confusion, folks. What we're seeing, the epidemics of chronic disease are light-related. Yeah. And, and this is the other mistake. You're off schedule. 
Yeah, and of course, a lot of people do have schedules that are insane, midnight uh, workers and things like Shift that. Shift workers, but, uh, yeah. The, a study published earlier this summer supports the steady sleep and wake time should be the goal. Even just one hour a night change could have a negative impact on health. The moral of the story is going to bed and waking up at the same time always, even on weekends and things like that. And that's when people tend to say, aha, now I don't have to get up early. I have to sleep in, but that kind of messes up your schedule. I agree. And there's another thing, too, because I always relish that quiet time in the morning. My wife sleeps later because work conditions. I, mm -hmm. I wake up mm -hmm. before the sun gets up and I'm at my studio at 6 a.m. in the morning. Right. So it means I get up at 5 or earlier a lot of times. I relish that time because that's the quiet time that I have. Exactly. And we have that a little bit at night too. I usually go off for an hour by myself. So does my wife. She reads. I watch a little TV. Maybe not the best thing, but it's the thing that seems but to help me. But you've got your glasses that yes. kind of shade everything down. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that's a really good point, Nico. And the fact that you get up at five o'clock, a lot of people go, oh, it's dark outside. I can't get that morning light. Mm -hmm. That darkness, infrared light is not seen. Mm -hmm. So when it's dark like that in the early mornings, it is an infrared. Talk about, you don't need an infrared sauna, just go out in the right, morning right. before the sun rises. And then the red light shows when, when the sun rises. Same thing at sunset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the next one is uh, related to this, of course, is because we never unplug. Disconnect to reconnect. Yeah. Exactly. Oops. We need to unplug. We're surrounded by this technology and we're guilty of crouching over the blue light television or our iPads or our iPhones. Uh, folks, Google how you can get more advanced red screen lighting onto your devices. Uh, uh, and work. now the modern phones mm -hmm. have a lot of that uh, already. In yeah, let me show you dark something. Dark mode and uh, the new Well, I mean, light this voice. is a really good one is, and I'll, I'll hold it up in case it can be seen, mm -hmm. but these color filters can turn your phone oh, that cool. red. I don't know if you guys see that. It's a program, and if What's you ask it called? Well, I don't know. You got you got to Google it. <laughs> okay. Hey, Matt Maruka from Raw Optics, you know, one of the dark glasses that mm -hmm. we love. He he did a podcast on it, but you can Google how to get the color filters on your iPhone. This is the way you look at a phone at night cool. if Very you look cool. at it at all. Mm -hmm. right. And yeah. then you turn it off. And you can have a shortcut where you just hit your phone three buttons and it's gone. So the recommendation is that at least an hour before you uh, decide to uh, hit the hay. Uh, Start unplug. your nighttime yeah, ritual and making unplug a top priority. Yeah. So the next one is kind of related to that, is trying to bank your sleep. Uh, ah, there you go. A lot of people party on the weekends and think they're going to catch up during the week. It doesn't work that way. No, now a little nap now and then, that could work. Maybe 20 minutes is the optimum time for a mm -hmm. nap. Any longer than that, and you go into a deeper sleep, and then you have a hard time waking up or you feel droggy waking up. So try not to bank your sleep. I mean, just get back on schedule. That's the best thing to do. Right. And really, guys, I like it when they tie this in. Sleep and metabolism are intricately connected. A lot of people think it's food, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's really the sleep. Yeah. And that's when we repair. Here's another mistake that people make. You underestimate the power of caffeine. Yeah, if I have mm -hmm. a coffee like at four, after 4 o'clock, then... Your that, sleep's going to suffer. And my sleep is going to suffer. I'm so the same we, way. So we channel, generally stop about 2 o'clock with the caffeine. Exactly. Good point. And, and, and another thing is that you overestimate the power of alcohol. Yes, and this works uh, bad for me. If I have more than a glass of wine, I can be You're going to feel it. Yeah, you're going to feel it. But so we'll, we'll continue this. this. Do we have a break? Stay with us. And in the meantime, please pick up our friend Lynn, folks. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And welcome back. So we're talking about the mistakes you might be making uh, trying to get to sleep or using, you know, different habits for sleep. And in the chat room, our producer was asking, what's an ideal time to get up in the morning? And that's the wrong question. The right, right question is, what is the ideal time for you to get up mm -hmm. individually? And as we just covered, uh, you want to keep a schedule. You want your body right. to get into its own circadian rhythm and the best circadian rhythm for health is that to follow the sun because yeah, the sun if you're not if you're sleeping past the morning and you're not getting out in that infrared and red light period the first two hours of sunrise before and after sunrise then you're not going to make your hormones the hormone cascade of your whole body is going to be off yeah that means you have to be outside or least, exactly you, know, you need so. i mean melatonin is made in the morning folks which brings us to well uh, let's mm -hmm. let's continue with this because mm -hmm. now everybody's on different schedules so mm -hmm. we can't come up with the sun anymore we have a producer that gets up probably a couple hours before we do mm -hmm. here. but the ma main thing now in the modern living is consistency and then paying attention to the light before you go to sleep the alcohol and all these other yeah things. i guess you have to make the best that you can do but if you're having health challenges because you have a bad rhythm you're going to have to find some ways yeah. to take a break and get out there for a little bit. You've got to work on that because things like blood pressure and, and chronic disease and diabetes are tied to your light cycle, exactly. period. So a mistake is uh, sleep, sleeping less than seven hours a night. And I would say eight or nine is better. Uh, seven is, seems to be the modern hit that everybody tries to strive for because we're so cramped, we, we have these jobs. And I told you one of the best books I read is Lights Out by T.S. Wiley. Oh. She, she's that researcher who has been made fun of uh, by the establishment because she's not a doctor, but she was the one that kind of got Suzanne Summers on hormones and mm -hmm. everything. And maybe she was a little bit, in my opinion, maybe pretty aggressive, but her research on sleep is bar none. Well, I excellent. find that happening a lot of people. There's a lot of amateurs out there doing fantastic research. And of course, that's what we're doing too. Mm -hmm. And we're finding solutions for ourselves and we're trying to pass it on to our viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to find your own way for sure. Uh, and uh, the internet helps and hinders. You really have to dig in both sides and then kind of get a feeling for what's right and then applying something and making sure that it works for you. Right. If it doesn't work for you, you, you toss it out. That's the way we work. So in addition to not sleeping enough hours, you know, seven or uh, less than seven hours, uh, a lot of people, uh, this, this hack says uh, you're taking melatonin. That might surprise some people. 
Supplemental melatonin is a common remedy that many folks turn to, um, but as it turns out, that's not where melatonin can be helpful. It's best suited to potentially help you adjust to a new sleep schedule. Um, you know, for time changes, I, I like, uh, I had a lot of people take a little shot of tart cherry. Tart uh-huh. cherry is loaded with melatonin. That maybe helps you make your own melatonin, but what did I just say? The best place to make your melatonin is in the early morning sun, right. and that signals the melatonin to be released, you know, 12 to 15 yeah. hours later. The telestrator's kind of acting up, so it's not the telestrator, it's this website that's kind of slow, but yeah. Yeah. So what's uh, the next one? The next one is kind of tied to the whole thing again, is that you need to relax, you need to calm down, and you know, have to have a certain routine, and mm-hmm. this is where things like yoga and breathing exercises, going for a slow walk. There's a lot of different things. Taking your tea at night, reading a book. Creating those rituals that, yes. that tell your body it's time to relax. We love rituals. I mean, that's what human beings really mm-hmm. dig that. I mean, if we go dig into our past, we still find relics that were used in a, in Very a, true. A, yeah, in a daily or nightly thing. So it's really important to find a way to uh, get a, some kind of structure to your routine. Exactly. And finally, eating yourself to no, sleep. No, there's another one before that. Mm. Oh, okay. You, you, well, that's right. You wake right. up worried, which well, is kind of tied down to the calm down. If you don't calm down, you're going to wake up stressed. Yeah, you're going to spend your whole repair time worrying about stuff. Yeah, and you may have those dreams that uh, actually disturb you. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I've always thought that dreams are kind of a reflection of your feelings. Mm-hmm. They may not be telling the story in the, the, the way uh, we like it. Well, but, many uh, of us that don't get into deep sleep don't dream, you mm-hmm. know. So if you're not getting into deep sleep, if you're not remembering your dreams, that's a sign you're not getting into the right sleep cycle. Yeah. So you want to work on that. So cool. finally, I said eating yourself to sleep. Hunger hormones are closely tied to sleep. If you have unusual hunger pangs and so forth, your ghrelin and um, leptin can be out of, those are hormones that mm-hmm. are light sensitive. And again, your exposure to real light, not this kind of a light in here, uh, will help your hormones get back on track. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to eat anything, they say maybe have a little bit of a carbohydrate, maybe help, helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It may help you to get through because really a lot of people don't sleep. Do you know why? Because they have low blood sugar in the middle of the night. Because they drink alcohol and the liver is processing it or they ate bad foods during the day. Right. right. Okay, so the next article is worker, uh, working Americans are getting less spe- sleep, and especially those who save our lives. You know, that's a pretty scary thought. I like this picture, um, you know, kind of shows you uh, a hospital, probably emergency room worker, just exhausted. Uh, these people get on to um, these work schedules, many of them like, you know, 12 hours on, three mm-hmm. days off. Looks like you're on home, not show day. Uh, there you go. So working yeah, Americans yeah. are getting less sleep. Yeah. And um, and this is kind of scary in effect. You go to the emergency room and the people there are sleep deprived. They surely are. It's a recent study showed from Ball State University <laughs> analyzed data from the National Health Interview Survey and they looked at self-reports of sleep duration among 150,000 adults that worked in different occupations mm-hmm. between 2010, 2018. Right. And they found the prevalence of inadequate sleep Seven, Seven hours or less increased from 30% to 35% in 2018. That's a significant yeah. increase. Worse for police officers and healthcare workers. And then, of course, the healthcare workers themselves, if you're going to be a doctor, mm-hmm. you're going to have a lot of work time. You know what's interesting? That book, T.S. Eliot says 8 to 10 is what you need to get. Mm-hmm. A lot of us almost have almost a judgmental idea about people that sleep that much. Oh, they're lazy. Yeah. That's sort of bad, isn't it? Well, it is, and uh, I, I bring back to that story of the American Indians, and there's a special tribe that really didn't like to work too much. They did the, the minimum. I remember uh, us talking about yeah, that. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they always thought they were lazy, and, well, ha- they happened to be the Navajo, and they happened to be in very warm situations, and, mm-hmm. you know, they take siestas during the day, just like the Mexican people mm-hmm. do, you know, and it's just a natural thing, and it's natural for uh, human beings to do enough. Mm-hmm. And then relax. Yeah. That's what we used to do. Uh, this insane thing that we have in our modern living, especially in the Western countries, is the work more and more and more. And if you're not, you'd look down upon, like you said. Yeah. It's kind of a strange uh, uh, mind, mind warping that we're getting. You know, then, if you are a police officer who just had a shooting encounter, it's hard for the brain to feel rested. And if that state is not achieved, you don't sleep. So the high stress that goes with emergency and police workers yeah. is 
and compounding we were the problem. talking about people who are dealing with death police police officers and health care workers and when somebody dies in your care or in your handling that's you know I, I don't ever want to live with that myself you right know, that's something you don't don't want to be with so so the stress is equally oppressive for all these health care or emergency workers dealing with severe illness and injury throughout the day coping in life and death situations they just have a hard time letting go um, yeah, and it, it, you find you have replays in your mind that just go over and over that are unstoppable. Mm -hmm. We've all had these things. I've had these things. And you can't stop them. So then you have to come back and do some kind of activity to help you. I use stretching and meditation and things like that. So yeah. we'll continue with this. Yes. We'll be right back, we'll folks. Right back, it's a good time to pick up some Primal Edge folks right now. to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balance results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. So today, most of us are not getting the recommended seven to nine hours of sleep that uh, is recommended in this article, and it just makes a lot of sense. Uh, even if you have a less stressful job, uh, people are saying, I'm not able to shut my mind down at night. My mind is running. I've, well, they're multitasking, yeah, working jobs exactly. and kids. And, and, and this brings me to mind, you know, when we watch TV these days, just about everybody has another device on hand. Right oh, there. yeah. 
You know, so you're watching TV and you're doing something with your iPhone or your iPad. Have you ever looked around in a restaurant? How many yeah, people thing. literally have their phones out? Sure, walking down the street, you got your phone. You're mm -hmm. looking down, your neck yeah. is compromised, everything's compromised. Mm -hmm. So, no wonder, and this is accelerating, we're going into an era of 5G where everything is going to be tagged with these things. Yeah. We're going to be in tune more than ever. And is this a bad thing, a good thing? You know, we're going to find out, folks. Yeah, it's almost like we're addicted to more information, which does not allow your mind to rest. Exactly. We, we, and, and, you know, I can attest to that. I love reading. Mm -hmm. And I like that stimulation, but it's very important that you set a, yeah. a stop cap. And I do see people now putting their phones down. I know when I go for a beer uh, with my buddies after jujitsu, I notice a lot of them don't have their phones. They leave them in their cars. Uh, a lot of people are not are, are getting the sense of wait a minute I'm overloaded, so there are people doing that. But at the same time, I think our whole, whole population is. is I notice that when I go to Europe, that people sure. they might pull the phone out to take a picture, mm -hmm. but then it's out of sight, and the people are looking at each other eye to eye. Yeah, you know? and it's much more important. Remember, it's just 20 years ago mm -hmm. that we were tied to a landline, that we didn't have a phone with us. Nobody could get a hold of us. Right. And that was okay and was probably better. Yeah. Yeah, it really is something. And I hope that everyone here will take the time to really hack their sleep and realize that your sleep encompasses a great deal of your life. So make it good sleep. Well, yeah, when, you, when you think of it, it's a, it's a third of your life, right? Mm -hmm, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So there's an interesting article I found about the real nature of willpower, which I thought was really kind of related to what we're doing here. Let me find this. I'm having trouble with this machine. But yeah, I think willpower is a great uh, segue from what we're talking about. So how do you make the changes in your lifestyle so that you can reap the benefits of what we now know? Well, just the, like when we say you just got to try harder. This is one of the old cliches from mm -hmm. way back when you're not trying hard enough and there is no trying. You're either doing something, or you're not doing something. There is no mm -hmm. there is no phase of trying. Yeah, if you're pushing something, you're trying to push it away physically, but in your mind. There's no, there's none of that at all. So, you know, set the stage. You come home, um, you know, you know when you actually come home mm -hmm. after a long day of work, you immediately, you know, yeah, you curl up on the sofa. You binge. You maybe watch a little TV, the news, or Netflix. Mm -hmm. You look around. You see the garbage needs to be taken out. The laundry needs to be folded. Your kids' toys are everywhere. The uh, list goes on and on, and you just feel like, ah, I don't want to do this. I just want to check out. And I think we've all done this. I felt that way. In fact, last week, I felt really low energy, had problems with my shoulder. Mm -hmm. and I, That's how was, I feel now with this. Yeah, and that mm -hmm. really drains you. So if there's something physically ailing you, that really drains you. And I think today, there's physically physical aim, uh, ailments in just about everybody that's walking today of some kind. Low-grade inflammation hammering you on a constant basis and this of course disrupts your sleep but now you say to yourself I have been sleeping badly now I want to change that so I have to use my willpower and what this article is talking about that a lot of us think that willpower is kind of like we've got this bucket and it's full of willpower and slowly we deplete it and when the bucket is empty we don't have willpower anymore uh, yeah but that's not the way our mind works right so this article is explaining that willpower is a state of mind that you set for yourself or is set up for you in society mm -hmm. in a sense so willpower all these things like meditation and breathing exercises uh, affirmations setting yourself up prayer this is where religion comes in religion is not something from my standpoint it's not something to say things over and over again like uh, you know the Lord's Prayer you say it over it becomes a dull thing mm -hmm. to make that sound new every time is the key so I think changing the language and having your own la la affirmation is good. From some, for some people, repeating things over and over is good. You have to find your own way to be calm well, in this world, I think. To kind of keep going with this article, they, mm -hmm. they define two things, willpower okay. and uh, ego depletion. Ego depletion is a theory mm -hmm. that willpower is connected to a limited reserve of mental energy. And once you run out of that energy, you're more likely to lose self-control. And this explains why a lot of people have that post-work defeat. Oh, yeah. hey, I'm so tired, exactly. i got to lay down. But the new studies suggest that, that we've been wrong. thinking wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, even worse, holding on to the idea that willpower is a limited resource can actually be bad for you, making it more likely to lose control and act uh, against your better judgment. 
Yeah, it's talking like, about the real nature of willpower. Yeah, it's it's motivation. It's kind of like motivation. Mm-hmm. Viewing willpower through the old and not quite so accurate lens causes us to work more towards willpower and less distracting things. These are, This is the wrong way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, by a study in Stanford University published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, the signs of ego depletion were observed only in those test subjects who believe willpower had a limited resource. Right. So if you get yourself thinking right, Mm -hmm. that you have an unlimited resource of Mm -hmm. willpower and maybe you're feeling depleted, but just go in there and get it and pull it out, right? It's kind of like, you know, Saturday I uh, went and had a little workout after I felt bad and things like that. And I had a strong workout. Everything was going good. Then Monday morning I did a little workout and I goes, wow, this is really Mm -hmm. good. I've got my mojo back. Right. And this is the kind of talking to myself that pumped me up. It had connections to a physical activity, which I really think is an important thing. Right. I think when you're feeling down in the dumps, you have to trigger something else. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, that's a physical activity, I think. And then Whether, those endorphins kick in and you feel elevated yeah. mentally. Yeah, so it can be going out for that walk or doing something like a burst uh, 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 um, exercise, or it can be just something slowing down melatonin, going for a sauna, doing a whirlpool, going for a swim, kayaking, whatever it is that something that kind of turns to, you on. Exactly, your passion. You. So the key here is that if we adjust the perspective and treat willpower as an emotion, there you go. It could instead be seen as providing insights about what we should and shouldn't be spending our time on by listening to our lack of willpower as we would an emotion. As a helpful decision-making assistant working in concert with our logical capabilities, we can find new paths that may not require us to do things fundamentally that we don't want to do. And our emotions are kind of endless. I mean, we we certainly can have negative emotions, too, and that seems endless also. So so we have a bank of endless emotions. Now we have to steer it the right way. You know what they say, what you think about, you bring about. That's what Tom Bryan always says. Right, and what we say to ourselves is vitally important. Mm -hmm. Labeling yourself as having poor self-control actually leads to less self-control. I don't think your mind really differentiates against somebody saying something to you bad or you saying something. Maybe it's more powerful when you say it. It's actually even worse when you say it yourself. Exactly. I always say, be careful what you say. Your cells are listening. That's right. And they're going to respond So when you look in the mirror and say, I look like crap, that permeates through the whole body. And that's that's how you start your day if you look at it that way. So So know this, folks. We do not run out of willpower. Believing we do makes us less likely to accomplish our goals. But per, by providing a rationale to quit when we could otherwise persist. So that's, yeah. that's some good news for today, yeah. I think. I, I was very lucky. I was brought up in a family that was always happy. My dad, when he woke up, he sang. Yes. You, you know, know, I always love hearing the stories about your dad and, and the love you had for your dad and how inspiring he was. Yeah. Got a break? We'll be right we'll be back. We'll right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We We take take it it every every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And welcome back to the program. So we're talking about willpower, and I thought I'd just make one instance of a company is called the energy product that really has solutions for this. This is, uh, of course, tied to work, but uh, right. my mind goes back to the first book my dad gave me on positive thinking, which was the, the Dale power Carnegie. Positive. Yeah, well, that was the second one. The first thinking one was how, rich. No, it was uh, how to oh. uh, win friends and influence people by oh. Dale Carnegie. Right. But I read all those other ones too. I was really there was a phase there in the seventies, right after college, where I was really into the self improvement phase, mm -hmm. trying to find things to motivate me to do better. And uh, Tony Robbins comes to mind, huge guy, mm -hmm. uh, a big, I went to a couple of his uh, uh, events, Event. which were tr tremendous. Uh, Stephen Covey with the seven habits of the highly, highly successful, successful people. people. Mm -hmm. These are things to frame you. And uh, in modern society, we lose a lot of that. Our religion used to do that. Uh, and that got carried away with uh, dogma and everything like that. And co-opted by politics. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that too. And politics was kind of in there trying to do that too. Mm -hmm. now, none, none of that accomplished. Some people are doing fine with that. Uh, but there's lots of different ways of doing that, and you have to find it within yourself. And these are some external things that you can well, do. This, this is, is an, an interesting uh, statistic. Fuel your people, fuel your business. Research and, uh, yeah. shows 73% of employees experience burnout. Yeah. And again, that's lack of willpower. Yeah, in mm -hmm. an era of relentless disruption and demand, employee overload and burnout have reached crisis levels. So these these companies spring up because there is a dire need for this. Mm -hmm. So this is how important this is. Uh, I just put this in there as an example. There's many, and if you go on to uh, Google or do a search engine for positive thinking, you'll find hundreds and hundreds of examples. Well, I like what it says here. What happens when teams fight burnout together? They feel better and they perform better. And that's what these companies are finding uh, when they kind of accept that, hey, we're all going to have willpower shortages and focus and moving forward issues. Let's motivate, inspire, and help each other to get back on track. Yeah, and one of the ways you can do that is simply by taking a walk. This ne next article from uh, Health, His uh, I think it's Health Healthista. Yeah, Healthista. Yeah. Seven ways walking can uh, boost your creativity, powered by science. Not only creativity, but it balances you. It uh, gets rid of that nagging voice in your head because now you're calming yourself. I'm telling you, I think this is fantastic because. I think there's a lot of people that talk about how busy they are, but they could easily spend their morning walk time as a time to reflect, organize, and plan their day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I always talk about my parents walking in the evening, early evening, 4 o'clock was their, their time. Mm -hmm. But morning walks are huge, I think. Mm -hmm. And probably an optimal time. Maybe both are. Right. And, and I, you know, I always go back to the Serengeti Plain where, you know, our ancestors lived or maybe even the Western Plains in America, and just waking up out of uh, your hut and looking at nature right, right. and the sun rising 
and the calming effect and then walking to do whatever you needed to do. That, this is the natural way man was uh, brought up. Yeah, so let's drill down uh, these seven ways walking can boost your creativity because there's a reason you feel better. Um, there's ways that walking can enhance and develop your creativity. And number one is it helps develop your problem-solving skills. Yeah, because when you go for a walk, you start not only emptying your mind, but so you start solving little problems in your head. You mm -hmm. start envisioning things and categorizing. And this is a natural ability that we have. We always thought of things and then, okay, we'll put that over here and let's think of something else. We'll put it over here, you get back from your walk, and you have your whole day set up. Well, I'll tell you another thing. I read someone that I follow explained why walking is so good for stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And many people that are in a work environment with a lot of problems to solve um, have issues because they're trapped inside. And there's not a lot of space for the problems. Huh. So if you get out in wide open spaces, mm -hmm. like the Dixie Chicks said, right? <laughs> right. Room to make a big mistake or room to solve a problem, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. The science applied, uh, the study applied science to something that's known as anecdotal. It's anecdotal, anecdotal for centuries. For centuries. Yeah, yeah, Some right. of the best known creative people in the world made walking an essential part of the creative practice. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Tchaikovsky, uh, he was the um, um, music uh, mm -hmm. composer. Uh, Composer, walk for 45 minutes every morning. I think there's some math involved in walking. You know, you've got the, your feet, you've got your arms swinging to a certain metronome, mm -hmm. you've got the heart beating. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Jobs uh, had walking meetings. Oh. And this is really interesting because it brings me back to when we were doing competitions for jujitsu. Then after the competition, we were all relaxed. We wanted to go out for a couple of drinks and there'd be like eight or ten of us going for a walk. Right. And we'd park someplace and then we'd walk for blocks on end because usually where we wanted to go, everything was happening, hard to find a parking spot. And this walking turned out to be just a really, <coughs> that was me. the highlight, not the destination. It was the walk and the camaraderie that we had with, you know, eight or ten guys. This is really interesting, Nico. It goes along with what you said. The philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau claimed that he could only think while he was walking. He said, my mind only works with my legs, he wrote, centuries before Stanford researchers could back him up. Yeah, there's a number of studies that have shown that walking reduces stress levels. Number part, two, that's the number yeah. two. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the effect is due to the motion itself, but part of it is due to the different sensory stimuli gained from moving around outside. That's mm -hmm. just what you said. Yeah, so, and a lot of people say when they're anxious, I have a number of stressful thoughts or experiences that I'm coping with. I tend to walk quickly and find that my thinking keeps pace. Invariably, I find myself slowing down physically. It's reflected in my thinking. Thoughts stop feeling mm -hmm. like an overheating steam train. Some of them drift away because they're unimportant to begin with, and others start to unwind. I like the descriptions here because that's kind of the way it feels when they just kind of drift away and float. And they go, and you don't feel them anymore, and some of them kind of just... Well, walking are... truly is a meditation, and you can make it even more so. I like this. Walking brings down cortisol levels and blood pressure. Hear that, show hmm. producer? Yeah. And leaving the room for creative ideas to bubble up. Yeah. When you're high in cortisol, you don't think clearly, folks. Yeah. When I was writing music, and writing music takes a certain frame of mind, you you know, when you're first in love, mm -hmm. writes a lot of songs. When you're just out of love, write a lot of songs. When you're looking for love, lots of songs. <laughs> but if you're in a relationship for a long time, there's no songs. Oh, that's so that's funny. really yeah. So don't make me laugh. It <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but the thing is, is a lot of times you're in that mood and you're going and you're going, but you have to take that break. Yeah. And that break and the motion that that comes with that break, going out for a walk, getting a little different uh, scenery. And then you come back refreshed, and all of a sudden the ideas come again. Yeah, yeah, it is something else. Yeah. And so number three, as we said, it helps you focus. Taking a walk helps you focus. It focus. And you know, we we talked about it earlier. Our tech saturated lives um, demand a lot of attention. Uh, when we walk, we can disconnect. It's hard to get good work done in a deep creative project when you're constantly being interrupted by emails, text messages, boy, that's for sure. Social media, mm -hmm. for sure. One well-known study showed that people working in an office switched tasks, uh, switching tasks through interruptions every three minutes. The problem uh, is that it takes around 20 minutes to fully regain. So if you're being interrupted 
constantly by yeah. the bing of the phone or even by having other to people. address another email. Yeah, now you to settle back in, it takes you on the average of 20 minutes to settle back in, and then you're in up to 10 minutes later, you're never going to settle back in. We're going to continue our, our discussion on how walking helps to boost your creativity and effectiveness. Stay with pick us. Pick some primal edge and please pick up the Health Signals newsletter, a new one coming out this week, folks. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of KFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week, live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Think or Swim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. And welcome back. So we're on uh, number four of seven ways to boost your creativity and uh, walking, increasing amount of research uh, coming from areas like neuroscience and early childhood development is focused on the concept of embodiment, uh, about it uh, means to be human, uh, separating the mind from the body. Embodiment brings the two back together. This is the mindfulness that we always talk about. And here's a picture of a guy walking a dog. So if you have a pet, you're kind of forced for the walk. So maybe yeah, that's a good that's thing. Yeah, that's a really good feature. And then walking with a, uh, a pet is huge because pets are really good for the mind, too. I think this is something else. Um, the person writing this was uh, sharing uh, the early writing, uh, early writing advice that they received was to keep your butt in a chair writing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm almost never resulted in better work. It resulted in the person being tired, cranky, and out of ideas. Yeah. That little brisk walk, and people say, even 20 minutes has been clinically proven to change your focus sure. and your outlook. And then I try and say to people, don't think of 20 minutes, think of 10 minutes away from the house and 10 minutes back. There you go. Then you start to be able to negotiate with yourself and that you have time. And that's a beautiful thing. And I think uh, maybe put the alarm clock on uh, for every hour, you put a little 10 minute uh, thing in there. Or it says, maybe just go move. Hours. Right. Yeah. Number five is really make you more creative. 
It really does make you more creative. I believe it does. I believe the mind, when it's engaged with nature, yeah. really changes Creativity things. is born of the unexpected. I New like ideas that. pop in. They don't come from, this is why sometimes even our vocabulary and our words stop us from experiencing new, because new isn't a word. New is an object or a feeling or a creativity of some kind. I think when we disconnect from this technology that controls us, we can then reconnect with yeah. our higher selves. Yeah, I agree with and you. that's where the creativity yeah. comes in. The hippocampus is where you get a sense of spatial relations. It's also where you build long-term memory. Mm -hmm. Number six, it boosts your mood. So going for a walk, no doubt about it. it boosts your mood. I like this. Extensive research shows that walking decreases rumination. How many people make themselves miserable by ruminating, repeating a thought or an idea, or getting angry because they, they've got something that's like a thorn in their side, right? Right. And the final one is number seven. It helps you prioritize your thoughts. In other words, you get things in order and lined up properly. That's right. So walking can be a great stress reliever and a great productivity tool. That's so, our show, folks. Go out for a walk. Have a great day. Bye -bye. See you next time.